Hey guys, we've got another fantastic product from my Japan trip haul. Today we're going to be taking a look at Akashia Sai brush pens. So keep watching. So many, many, many years ago, I reviewed the original 27 Akashia Sai brush pens and I reviewed them over at natosoup.blogspot.com. You guys can check out that initial review by clicking the card here. TLDR, I didn't like them. Um, I tried to use them like watercolor pens, like watercolor brush pens, and the dyes separated into the individual colors. It's called color chromatography. And while that might look good in some instances, it was not the effect that I wanted. I think I rehomed those. I think I gave them to a friend. Rather than rebuying the exact same ones, Akashia has since released more colors. And in Japan, they're not only available in themed sets, Spring, Suya, and Omomuki are what I have here. They're also available open stock. So I could have picked up, you know, very specific individual colors. So the sets come with five each. And like I said, these sort of sets are themed. And I got what I thought would be colors that were most useful to me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unbox one of them for you guys. And they have the names here. Now, unfortunately, I cannot read kanji or katakana. So one of you will have to be a friend and tell me what it says. I paid roughly $10 for five pins or $2 a pen. Before I get swatching, I'm going to pull out a Zig Clean Color Real Brush and a Neo Pico 4. Both of these are water-based brush pins that feature individual nylon bristles. So they're very comparable. You can get the Zig Clean Color Real Brushes um, open stock or in sets of six or in larger sets than that. You can get the Neo Pico 4s in sets of five. They are very, very similar to the Akashia Sai brush pens. As you guys can see, they basically use the same body, the same styling, the same caps. What's different is the color of the body and the fact that the Neo Pico watercolor brushes have a little more information than the Akashia bodies do. I'm gonna start by swatching in the color family and then washing out with water because that's where they fell apart last time. Fresh out of the box and basically brand new, these markers deliver a good amount of dye to the paper. They are not particularly dry, so they are already leagues above the Wish knockoff I just reviewed. The clip is a nice addition. It's not necessary, but it's a nice addition. I hope the formulation is a little bit better so that the colors don't separate out. If these end up performing as well as the Clean Color Real Brush markers do and are interchangeable with those, these could be a really good alternative to alcohol markers for those with smell sensitivities since they're water-based. They would also be a little more washable. And although alcohol markers are generally non-toxic, they do tend to have fumes. So, you know, something like this might be safer for families that like to create together. They don't put down an inordinate amount of liquid on the page. I am testing this on a Canson Mixed Media XL sketchbook. So they might be a good option for coloring book fans who'd like a little bit of blending, but don't necessarily want their colors to bleed right through the page. As you guys can see, with working wet into wet, we naturally can get a bit of blending. This can be further encouraged by using a glycerin-based, water-based blender, like an Echoline blender, or um, you could even make your own by adding a little vegetable glycerin 
to your water brush. That was the spring colors. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Suya colors. So far, um, two of the three sets we've tested have held up. There has been no real color separation. The green that seems to be up here, that's just because it didn't clean out all the way. So that isn't a reflection on the marker, it's a reflection on the testing person. Almost some sunset colors in Suya. So that was Suya. On the next page, I'm going to swatch Omomu uh, Omomuki. So this is kind of neat. As I repackage these, two of them are shorter than the other two, but they seem to be all perfectly lined up. Me, Yeah, let's see if they really are. It doesn't really make any difference. It just probably means they swatched. Ah, ha, ha, there we go. That would be why. Make sure the caps are on securely, friends. Finally, we're taking a look at Omomuki colors. And these seem to be the most muted. And I really like these reusable little plastic snap boxes. They're very compact. They keep everything very tidy. They're not expensively made. It's not particularly thick uh, plastic, but it is corrugated plastic. And what's also nice is they have painting tips on the back. At $10 a box for five colors, they're a little bit pricier than what a lot of people are used to paying for water-based markers. And unfortunately, $10 a box is probably not what you're paying if you're basically anywhere but Japan. They can be more difficult to find. And I promise before the video ends, I'll give you guys some sources on where you can pick them up. And you may not be able to find them open stock anywhere outside of Japan. They do seem very similar to the Neo Pico 4s and to the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So you may be able to sort of augment either collection with these and vice versa. And of all the colors I swatched today, I had none of the color chromatography separation problems that I had with the initial batch I purchased. These do seem to be an addition to that additional, that, I mean that original set. So if you have Akashiya Shine markers and you're looking for more colors, there are more colors available. Though, like I said, they do seem like they would be compatible with Neo Pico 4 and with Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. Now I'm gonna swatch all three sets so we can, you know, one-to-one -one compare the colors in the sets. If you have arthritis, you may find these markers a little bit difficult to cap and uncap quickly. So that is something to keep in mind. And you do wanna make sure you get the caps back on securely. I also find that if you put them back in the way they came out, um, it can be a little bit difficult to get them in and out smoothly because the paper insert kind of gets in the way. Spring, Suya, Omumuki. You can find the original 20 color set on Amazon for $26.59 with prime shipping, or you can get them on jet pins for $34.50, and that does not include free shipping. Oh no, I lied, it qualifies for free shipping in the USA. You can also get the Japanese traditional set of 30 colors for $52, also on prime, as well as the spring set for $8.57 on uh, Amazon, which is a little bit less than uh, the $10 a box I was quoting from what I paid from Tokyo Hans. Through the Akashia portal for Amazon, you can also get the summer set like I said before, the traditional Japanese color sets, as well as the original set and other brush pins. And I believe you can also 
find them open stock under the uh, spring listing. I'll put links for all of this below in case you're looking for these as well. You can also find them available open stock on jet pins for $3.50 each, or you could get the spring set for $17.50. On Amazon, your individual colors run $5.50. So if you're looking to get them open stock, jet pins does indeed have the best price, but if you're looking to buy them in sets, Amazon tends to have the better price, especially for the spring set. So I hope you guys found this unboxing swatch helpful, useful, and informative. I hope this answered some questions and maybe gave Akashia a little bit of redemption since it seems like their additional colors are an improvement on their original 20. I would definitely be interested in revisiting that original 20 set. However, I am not interested in repurchasing it. So if anybody ever wants to send me one, like loan me one to review, I'd be happy to give it another look. I would definitely be interested in collecting some of the other colors, especially the traditional Japanese colors, since those tend to be colors I enjoy a lot regardless. So you may see more videos on this topic in the future. I hope to have a field test for you guys, not because I think they don't perform well, but just because I enjoy playing with them and I'd love to see how well they work with um, clean color real brush markers and uh, Neo Pico 4 markers. So if that sounds interesting to you, please feel free to keep an eye out and consider subscribing to my channel for more fantastic videos. If you're looking for more information about water-based markers, head on over to nettosoup.blogspot.com and check out my water-based marker section. I hope you guys had a great day. I hope to see you again really soon. And I hope this video was helpful, informative, and maybe even inspirational for you. Again, you guys can check the description below for links to all of the products mentioned in this video. Have a great day, guys. Bye.